Everybody out there, it's Pastor John with your midweek reflection. Still feeling good after a wonderful Easter celebration where we said we're going to give up death and all of the practices of death, all of the things that we do because we're afraid, uh, and we're going we're gonna to practice resurrection instead. We're going to live like Jesus, where you know the shadow of death may be looming over us, but we're going to choose to live lives of prophetic and life-giving love. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna do it no matter what. Um, and, and I just am, I'm inspired by by, by the story uh, of Jesus um, being raised from the dead and, and conquering death and and claiming victory over sin and fear and all of the things that keep us from God. And so um, we're moving in this week to a series on prayer, and we're calling it the Living God because. Um, The whole reason we pray is because we have a living God who we know is there and we know is listening. Um, And so that's that's kind of the the motivation. It's also almost an extension of some of the things that we talked about during Lent. With um, With each habit we gave up during Lent, control, worry, enemies, all those things, we also took on another practice, Uh, gratitude, trust. Uh, love, whatever the, the, the case was. And really, at, at the heart of it all was, was this desire to give up things, w- the things that we do that try and kind of manage life all by ourselves, and take on practices that help us to do life with God. Uh, and that's what prayer, that, that's where we come to prayer. Prayer was really, we, we saw it popping up throughout Lent as, as some of the practices that we take on. So we're going to really zoom in more on prayer over the next few weeks. Uh, this week we're going to be looking at John 15 and we're going to uh, be talking about the heart of prayer. Uh, what is prayer? Uh, throughout this series we're really going to work hard to try and balance teaching on what is prayer, why do we do it, you know, what does the Bible have to say about it, and teaching on like how do we actually practice it. I mean we always try and connect head and hands, you know, the the knowing or believing and the doing. Uh, but we're really gonna have to try and do that this this series. So we're gonna break up sermons into, you know, the teaching on what is prayer, why do we do it, and some tips and a practice of how can we actually integrate that into our life with that we're living with God uh, Monday through Saturday, not just Sunday morning. Um, but this week we're going to be starting off with what is the essence of prayer? And so that's one of my questions to you on this reflection. What is prayer? What's the heart and soul of it? What is at the core of what prayer is and what it's all about? How would you respond to that question if someone asked you to define what prayer is? And then I want you to maybe consider a couple different uh, paradigms for thinking about what, what prayer is. Um, I want you to consider a transactional paradigm of prayer and a relational paradigm of prayer. Uh, a transactional paradigm of prayer, you know, comes. we're, we're talking about the, a transaction. You know, if you go to Meyer uh, or if you go to Kroger, don't want to, you know, we're not being sponsored here. So uh, Meyer, Kroger, wherever you go grocery shopping, uh, Aldi, whatever. Um, you go there and there's a transactional kind of thing going on, a transactional relationship between you and the store. Um, you give them money, they give you food, product. Um, if, if I don't give them money, they're not going to give me food. And if, if they're not going to give me food, I'm not going to give them money. It, it's a transaction. It's very contractual. There's no real expectation of generosity or compassion, really, or any of that when we go. It's either you have the money or you don't. You get the you have the product or you don't. And, and there's a transactional quality to that relationship, if you can call it a relationship. Um, and sometimes, you know, how, how does that play into how we think about prayer? Do we have a transactional view of prayer where, uh, you know, God has what I want, I go to God, I, I say the right words, and God gives me what I want, um, and what is it that I want in all of that? It, it, but is it transactional? Is that kind of my approach um, to prayer? Or is there a more relational approach? Um, or a conversational approach where we're, um, you know, when, you, when you're having a conversation with a friend or a spouse or, a, you know, what have you, um, you know, the, the best conversations are not transactional. There, there's a give and take. There's an ebb and flow. There's a, well, you're going to go here. I'm going to have a question about that. I want to explore this. It's kind of a back and forth. There's, there's, some, there's relationship going on. We do have transactional 
conversations, even with friends and loved ones. Um, and it can get dangerous if we, if that becomes our mode of, of, of interacting. But, but we know the best conversations are, are relational, where we're, there's, there's give and take, there's mutuality to it. Uh, so how does that look in your prayer life? Do you feel like when you pray, there's this relational give and take, ebb and flow, exploration, asking questions, sharing kind of thing? Um, so think about, you know, how do you approach prayer uh, as you look at those paradigms, um, which are not necessarily mutually exclusive, um, but some things to consider uh, as you prepare for Sunday. As always, I look forward to worshiping with you as we live the gospel life together. Until then, may God bless you.